Hi, this is Professor Jan Mei Chan at California State University, Long Beach. In this video lesson today, we'll look at the concept of measurements. In particular, we'll look at the area and volume of some common geometric shapes. The fundamental concept in measurements is that it doesn't matter what you're measuring, just pick a unit of measurement and count how many of that unit fit into the given object. For example, in the old days when people don't have rulers, people measured the size of a room using simply their feet. But the problem is your friend's size of the foot is different than your size of the foot, making it difficult to communicate this type of information formally. That is, your friend will say the size of the room is three feet, while you'll say the size of the room is six feet. So for people who don't know the size of your foot and the size of your friend's foot, they will have no idea how big this room is. So we as the human race have to create standardized counting units. For example, the currency for money or foot for length, cubic centimeters for volume and seconds and hours for time, etc. to measure the quantity of things that are important to everyday living. That way everybody knows how long a foot is and it allows us to convert to different units easily. Now in this video, we'll only focus on developing the concept of measuring area and volume of common shapes. There are a lot of other interesting concepts surrounding measurements that you can explore after this. Since we're going to focus on geometric shapes, it makes sense to talk about dimensionality of physical objects. All physical objects can be categorized into either one-dimensional, two-dimensional, or three-dimensional. The standardized measuring or counting unit for all one-dimensional object is called length. The common units we use for measuring length include centimeter, foot, inches, miles, and kilometers. For example, if I'm interested in measuring the length of a wire, and you can imagine holding this wire in the air, so it really lives in a three-dimensional space, but the wire itself is intrinsically one-dimensional because the wire is so thin that it really takes up no area or no volume in this space. But because of the limitation of drawing, we have to depict this wire in a two-dimensional space, which is the two-dimensional video screen you're looking at. To measure the length of this wire, I will first find an appropriate counting unit well, clearly, mile is way too long for something this small, and using millimeter is way too tedious and small for something this decent size. It seems to me that the centimeter seems to be about the right size for counting in this situation. If this is the size of one centimeter, then the length of this wire is essentially how many of those one-piece centimeters I can fit into this wire. Now, a couple of ways you can think about this. If you literally have this wire in the mid air, you can pull it straight and then lay it down on the table and and measure how many of those one piece centimeters you can have. But again, we're limited to this two dimensional video screen. So the way I'm gonna do it is to cut this wire into straight pieces or line segments that allow me to fit into this one centimeter pieces. And generally you wanna pick the measuring unit that allows you to fit the wire with only straight line segments. What I mean by that is that if we had chosen inches as the measuring unit in this case, well, an inch is about this long. Then by trying to fit this this line segment onto this wire, you can tell that we're overshooting the actual length. But if you had used centimeter instead, then you can see that I can fairly do a good job of fitting that one centimeter on the line. At the point where it stopped from that previous line segment, I can fit another centimeter line segment on the wire. And I continue doing this until I have covered everything or this entire wire with straight line segments that measures one centimeter. And you can tell at points where this wire is very curvy, you're not going to do a very good job of fitting that straight line segment onto the wire. And this is what I meant by picking the correct measuring unit. You want to pick the appropriate size of that measuring unit in order for you to fit straight line segments on every part of that wire. Then at the end of this, you're going to count off on how many of those line segments you had. That last piece seems to be a fraction of a segment, about a third of that fraction. So it seems to me that this wire is about 13 and a third centimeters long. And again, this is an estimate of the length of this wire. If you had chosen a unit that is smaller than a centimeter, then you can improve the accuracy in the portion where the wire is curvy. I'm really delving into the concept of calculus here if I say more. So let me just stop here for the concept of length and move on to the two-dimensional objects. The standard counting units for all two-dimensional 
dimensional objects, which are things that are flat, is area. For example, if you wanted to know how much material is used to make a paper cup, then you would be calculating what we call the surface area. Because if you imagine the paper cup is super thin, that it takes up no volume, then if you were to cut that paper cup anywhere on the rim of the paper cup and flatten it out, it becomes like a sheet of paper. So to calculate the surface area of a paper cup is essentially doing the same calculation for finding the area of rectangle. To get the counting units for two-dimensional objects, we start with the one-dimensional counting units, which are line segments. And we simply stack these line segments to form a square. So for example, if I'm using a one centimeter as my counting unit for one-dimensional object, then imagine stacking a bunch of these line segments. And you're doing this in a way that there's no gap in between. So they're packed in so fine that you can't see any space in between. And suppose you stacked one centimeter of many of those line segments. Then the result is a squared with length one centimeters on four sides. Another way to visualize this is if you start with the one centimeter base, then you can imagine pulling this line up or sweep this line up to fill this entire space all the way up to where the one centimeter mark is. So the counting unit for all two dimensional objects are these one centimeter squared squared. These are also known as the unit squared. And the common units for finding areas are one one centimeter squared, feet squared, kilometer squared, mile squared, inches squared, and so on. Next, let me give you an example of how people actually measure area in real life situations. Suppose I'm interested in measuring the area of a field enclosed by a thin wire that looks like the following. Like before, I would like to find an appropriate counting unit that is size appropriate, meaning that if I were to cut up this entire space into a bunch of little unit squares, I can fit the unit squares so tightly that there wouldn't be any overshoot or under shoot of um, how many there should be. And let's say we've picked the one centimeter squared as the counting units here. Then what I would do is I would divide up this entire space where this field lives in into a bunch of these one centimeter squared units. For example, uh, if I know this is one centimeter wide, I would then draw horizontal lines that are one centimeter apart. I will also draw vertical lines that are one centimeter apart as well. Then to find out the area of this field, I will first identify which unit squares this field occupies and then count how many there are. In this case, it seems like there are 19 of those unit squares. So I would say the area of this enclosed field is roughly 19 centimeters squared. And again, you'll notice that there's a lot of overestimates in doing things this way is because the counting unit is a bit too big in this case, right? All of these extra spaces that you're including really should not be part of the area of this field. To fix the overestimation, all you need to do is choose a smaller counting unit. And this is essentially the concept of limit in calculus. The standard counting units for all three-dimensional objects, which are things that make up physical space, is called volume. To get the counting unit for three-dimensional objects, we would start with one two-dimensional counting unit, which is the unit square, and essentially stack the square so that you get a cube. So this is your two-dimensional counting units to draw in perspective. Now imagine you have a bunch of these two-dimensional counting units stacked up, like stacking a bunch of papers. Or you can imagine Imagine pulling that base counting unit all the way up to one unit high. So if we say that the side length of the unit square on the bottom is one centimeter, and then this is essentially pulling up one centimeter high of those one centimeter squares. So using the definition of multiplication, we know that there are one centimeter sets of one centimeter squared, giving us a total of one centimeter cube. Again, a cube is basically a bunch of squares stacked up. And the common units for measuring Measuring three-dimensional objects include centimeter cubed, feet cubed, inches cubed, or liters. Next, let me give you an example of a three-dimensional object that we're most likely interested in measuring. I want to know the volume of a circular cylinder. And a circular cylinder is one where you have the base that is a circular disc. So think about this as a kind of a filled-in circle. And using the concept we've talked about before, a cylinder is such that you pull this base up to a height that you're interested in to form a circular cylinder. Again, to see the volume of these three-dimensional objects, we imagine pulling up or stacking up this bunch of filled disks that sit on top of each other so finely that there is no space in between. And the height of the cylinder tells you how many of those filled disks there are. So if we know that the radius of this circular disk on the bottom is r, then the area of the circular disk is pi 
pi r squared. And since we have h of those, that gives us the volume h sets of pi r squares or h times pi r squared. And I want to make a very fine distinction between the word disk and circle. In most of situations when we refer to a circle, we're referring it to it as this thin line that doesn't enclose anything inside. But when we use the word disk, we're saying that it actually is something that has area. So it only makes sense to measure the length of a circle, but it makes sense to measure the area of a disk. Now, this example illustrates the most popular way people measure volume. Essentially, you take a cross section of a familiar shape that you know the area of, and then count how many there are in this entire object. In this case, the cross section we took was the horizontal cross section. Now, you want to do the cross section in a way that produces the same shape every time you do the cross section in that direction. You're not going to get the same shape every time and you do it vertical cross section. So that is not the direction you want to do this problem. In summary, the key concepts of this video includes first, regardless what you're counting, just pick a counting unit and count how many there are. And when you pick the counting unit, you want to pick the size appropriate one that gives you the most accurate estimate of your object. And number three, we talked about how the length is the appropriate measuring unit for a one dimensional object. Area is the appropriate measurement unit for two dimensional objects and Volume is the appropriate measuring units for three-dimensional objects. And the last one is probably the most important concept in this lesson was that if you wanted to find the volume of a solid, then you would start with the area of a familiar shape obtained by doing a cross-section with that solid, and then essentially count how many of those shapes there are. That will give you the volume of the solid. This last concept can be generalized to any dimension you want. For example, if you wanted to find the volume of a four-dimensional object, Object, you use exactly the same concept as well. Now, if you're interested in knowing what a four dimensional object looks like, look up the word tesseract. And in your spare time, I encourage you to watch this movie called Flatland. It will hopefully blow your mind up.